When the Minnesota Fighting Vikings drafted Washburn Ichabod University left tackle Kyle Hinton in the seventh round, Kyle, not Chris Hinton, I'm sure we'll slip up a time or two during this video, at first we were like, huh. Uh, then we saw some of the grainy Zapruder film uh, style uh, video of him kicking ass and taking names and some sort of like Huddle High School uh, highlight reel. And we're like, ooh. Uh, and then we got word that Kubiak was going to move him to center. And then we're like, huh? Huh. But now, after thinking about it for a hot second, it, it does make all the sense in the world. So let's talk about it today. Uh, background on Kyle Hinton. Uh, 6'2", 295 pound senior from Arizona, uh, originally from Arizona, uh, was a three-year starter uh, for at left tackle for the Ichabods, 33 starts on the blind side. Uh, senior 2019 uh, was a second team Division II All-American stud, and you, we did a film review of him uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and yes, it was the high, highlight reel from his Twitter page, but... You know, like how it is kind of tough to get Washburn film, uh, but no combine uh, did have himself a pro day, though, before the Rona shut everything down. He ran a four eight eight forty, which is <laughs> which is just insane. Thirty four reps on the bench, thirty four and a half inch vert. So uh, an amazing plus athlete and just really excited to get him in uh, to the building here. Yeah, big explosiveness um, jumps uh, were absolutely huge and just a really exciting small school uh, gem that uh, the Vikings bring in for Rick Dennison and Gary Kubiak, something that's obviously they're going to be pretty hyped about. Now, initially I thought was, well, he, he's going to kick inside, right? So I, Isaiah Wynn is, uh, of the Patriots is the only 6'2 starting tackle in the NFL, so probably isn't going to pan out there. Uh, and then you also have Ezra Cleveland, you have Brian O'Neill, plus uh, picked up Blake Brandell from o Oregon State's probably going to be a, a tackle tackle so not really a lot of room to advance there uh, plus since he didn't draft another interior offensive lineman that was the thinking with Hinton all right kick him into guard you're gonna be good to go but also you know the center route does make sense even though uh, we were still holding out like the pipe dreams like hey maybe Kyle ha aka Chris Hinton somehow just steals the left guard spot as a seventh rounder from a d4 school like maybe it just works out with no TAs and no training camp maybe that just happens but probably not uh, but uh, the center route does make sense. A, uh, Hinton likely won't be threatening to play anytime this year. It just is what it is. Uh, so guard, that dream is probably gone. Uh, and he's definitely not a threat for Bradbury at, at center this year. So uh, take that off the table. But B, if you figure that Hinton will be an in interior offensive line backup uh, this year going into the future, you know, why, why not have him learn the pivot spot, right? So let him back up three spots, plus that uber athleticism. It, it is relatively comparable to the Grim Reacher Garrett Bradbury. So why not have two nail-driving uber athletic centers on the roster? You know, why, why the hell not? Plus, you're learning, uh, having Hinton learn the ins and outs of call and protection, that would be big to his versatility uh, going forward. Plus, I mean... Even small things just like snapping the football and then getting your right hand uh, back up and getting ready for that uh, interior defensive lineman, I mean, that's big. And that's an acquired skill uh, that does take reps, so why not uh, kick uh, kick the clock on that? Now, plus, uh, say Hinton does make the 53-man roster a as a rookie. Uh, now, his chances go way up if he is that swing into your offensive lineman and then can back up both guard spots and center. Uh, makes Brett Jones relatively expendable. Even though it's pretty gangster that Kubiak said that, oh, sp spending time with Brett Jones, uh, hey, you're hanging out with your replacement. But uh, so is life uh, in the NFL. And, and so if they do go with that route and they do want to roster Hinton, which, I mean, if he does show enough promise in you know whatever training camp is, uh, teams may look to add him to the 53-man roster because, I mean, the, the, he was going to be in high demand as a priority UDFA, so that's one of the big reasons why the Vikings scooped him up with one of their 17,000 seventh rounders. So if it fills in for Brett Jones, that's great. Uh, I still think that Hinton's ceiling this year is probably practice squad, uh, but him learning all, all three interior offensive line spots where he's going to be living for his NFL career, uh, I think that does make a lot of sense because I, I just absolutely adore his crazy athleticism. He's got he, he's got NFL caliber strength already, and with Kubiak and Dennison getting after him for a couple of years, I, I think Kyle Hinton could quickly become Chris Hinton, uh, as we keep saying. Just a really great uber athletic, uh, awesome movement piece on the Vikings' interior offensive line, and just having him learn center on top of the two guard spots, uh, it's only going to benefit him in the long run. Uh, but your thoughts, Kyle Hinton? Oh, that's Moving to center, question mark? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. If you want to support the work, pull us up in the Venmo. Please give us a follow on social media as well. But until next time, Skull, production value. <laughs>